Uh, so thank you, Andy, for the uh, awesome introduction. Um, since there are some in, uh, some non-Dutch speaking folks in the room, I'll be doing the talk in English, and I'll be talking about debugging workers today. So, um, who am I? I'm the guy on the screen here. Um, I've been working at Combel. It's uh, a Belgian hosting company for approximately 10 years now. I work as a support engineer. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I deal with customers uh, calling or mailing and saying, hey, my site is broken, it's down, uh, this isn't working. Uh, technically, every kind of issue, uh, both with WordPress and other CMSs, and with custom, uh, custom applications, websites, and things like that. Uh, I've been a WordPress user since version 1.5, back all the way in 2005. I um, have a passion for security and performance, and I'm on Twitter at Plechtrijkaart and uh, plechtrijkaart.com. Now, who knows this? Whenever launching a new website, or even updating plugins or themes, or even when migrating your website. Just by show of hands, who has seen this before? Pretty much everybody. And things like this, I assume as well. Doesn't it make you go like banging the keyboards against your desk and things like that? Now, before we can dive into debugging, uh, we need to understand what kind of errors there are. And basically, Let's say 95% of all cases you'll be uh, seeing two kinds of error codes. You've got the 400 error codes and the 500 error codes. Now, any of you know the difference between a 400 and a 500? Anyone? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I do. The 400 the mission related was uh, the 500 more uh, code errors. It's actually far more simple to explain it. 400, you stuffed up. 500, your server stuffed up, basically. Just to give you an example, um, 400, oh, I'll just go back, here you go. Since it uh, needs to be politically correct, I said stuffed up, but you all know which word I mean. Now, in the 400 series, there's like the, well, the things you will see most are like, uh, 404, 403, things like that. Uh, 405 sometimes. Uh, 401 is, is also one that sometimes uh, happens. And well, yeah, the explanations, I think they, they speak for themselves. So there are, uh, there are pages with the RFCs, with the entire status codes, which are pretty, pretty fun. One of them is, uh, is called I'm a Teapot. Just look it up, it's really funny. And then the 500 ser uh, series of codes are exactly what, it, what they are, uh, server related, so an internal server error, a server is unavailable. The one you'll we'll probably see most is the 503. 503 or 504, both are pretty common. Now, anybody has an idea on how to debug this? Anything, just shout. Check the logs. Yeah, check the logs. Yeah, exactly. There's actually three things I use. Server logs, very important. WP debug, which often gets forgotten, sadly enough. And WP CLI, uh, which is actually just a command line interface to manage WordPress, but it can be really, really helpful in case of, in case of, uh, of errors. So first up, server logs. Okay, so there are a couple of types of errors you can see in the logs. Uh, we got the fatal error, uh, you got warnings, warnings and notices, and you got several limit-related limit errors. Just to give you an example on how a server log might look, this is an example of uh, well, some excerpts of uh, an error log of one of my own sites, which I uh, just changed to somewebsite.com, just to keep it a, a bit anonymous. Uh, because throughout the talk you'll be seeing actual examples of tickets I've worked on for the last like month and a half and errors that were triggered and on sites. And yeah, to keep some anonymity for our customers, I just uh, changed them all to somewebsite.com. 
So this, well, this one here, uh, I'll just go over uh, some of them in, uh, in detail and highlighting. So client denied by server configuration is one that we often get and usually indicates that something is pretty darn wrong with your HD access file. So if you get a client denied by server configuration, it's probably a good idea to start by looking at your HD access. Then there's things like this, this uh, timeout, which can point in the direction of several things, but usually it's, uh, for example, an external element that needs to be checked or a server that needs to respond and it doesn't happen, or it just keeps on waiting and well, eventually the server will kill the process and we'll get uh, this kind of error thrown. And then there's, of course, things like this one. Everybody hates this one because, well, it's obvious. Fatal error means PHP will stop processing the code and just kill it all and throw no output or limited output or whatever. Uh, it just won't render. Um, you won't get the, the requested result. Like for an, in this example, you'll see the fatal error. So this will give you an indication of this is a breaking point for my, my loading process, for my uh, process I'm trying to do, whether it's loading a site or doing some action in the, in the back end or whatever. And then it helps to just follow the line and just actually just read what, uh, what kind of component is triggering this. So in this case, if we look into this, this log excerpt, we'll see here that it's concerned to the, or it's related to the WP, um, to the WooCommerce multilingual plugin specifically this one. Now, if for example, you just updated your uh, WooCommerce multilingual plugin, you, just, you knew because of this that this broke. So the easiest way would be to revert the update uh, and just get in touch with the developers or look further into what's, what's actually blocking this. And you'll also always get uh, further information on what the exact issue is here. So. This is why the logs are really, really important and sadly, well, based on the amount of calls and mails I get, I'd be happy to say if 25% of our customers looks at the logs, but I'm afraid that's not the case. So, they just call it, it's broken. Then there's uh, an amazing tool within WordPress called WP Debug. It's always there in our WP config file and so often forgotten, even with my colleagues at the support team. So they just go into the server logs and if they don't find it there, oh, I can't find it, can't find it, Brecht, will you look at it? And I, I always say, have you tried WP debug? So in WP uh, config, we have one simple line, which is WP debug uh, false. And just to enable the debug function, you can just switch it to true and it will output uh, extra information on the errors but of course that's not very uh, well, how should I put it um, it's public the errors are public for anyone to see just if you do that it's blatantly public then there's extra statements you can give uh, define so this is actually a line you just can add beneath or above uh, the, uh, the WP debug true uh, line and this will actually create a log file in the WP content folder. So all the extra information that you're probably missing in the server error logs will be added there. And then this is a very good one, especially when you need to do this on a, on a production environment of a customer, is just setting WP debug display on false. So you have the ideal setup here, which enables WP debug. It'll enable writing the output to a log file, which is not public technically, or at least it's not showing on the rendered version of your, uh, of your website. And this disables the rendering of the errors on your website. So for the customer or client or whatever, or your, your own projects, there's, for the visitor, there's nothing to see, but you're logging every single instance of a failure within WordPress. So this is a very, very good setup if you want to go and uh, debug. 
In what uh, file did you change this? this? This is actually all entries in the WP config file. Okay. So by default you have uh, this first little line, and those two are ones I add, um, just to keep well, the output hidden and logged into a file, which makes it easier to just, uh, well, in VI or whatever your uh, preferred uh, editor is in, in, on the command line, just to uh, well, analyze the logs and search for specific entries. No. Then we have WPCLI, which has uh, well, recently become an official WordPress project, uh, which is a very good thing. Um, these are some of the commands I use. Now, for example, uh, a customer calls us and yeah, I just updated this plugin and now my website isn't loading anymore. Okay, no problem. First thing we can try is just uh, see if WP plugin list gives us an output. This provides just a simple list of all plugins and status if they're active or not and if there's an upgrade available. Uh, but the fun thing is, if that works, you can easily say, okay, WP plugin deactivate, and for example, uh, Yoast uh, hyphen SEO, and it will deactivate that plugin even if you don't have WP admin access anymore. So this can be a live saver. Uh, the same thing with teams, uh, you have WP team list, activate and deactivate. Um, and then, especially in, in um, certain, certain issues are when the log files don't tell you everything, uh, so WP debug doesn't show any specific indication, uh, the server logs don't give you any good instance, it might be a good thing to test uh, the WordPress website and the plugins by using WP checksum core or WP checksum plugins. Now, what this does is it, it'll uh, run a test and verify the files of your installation against the one in the, rep uh, in the repository and in I'd say 5 to 10 percent of all cases this results in finding your hacking related files which become an issue in the rendering process or who intertwine with the running uh, com or which cause a conflict between plugins or things like that so this can be a true lifesaver and it's actually rather fast so please use it. Now, Another cool thing is, um, and I'm pretty sure it's not an intended use of, of WPCLI, but sometimes whenever I uh, run a command, for example, in this case, this is a recent one uh, from a couple of days ago, I just ran the command WP team list to see what teams were running, and I got this output. So this isn't the normal output for WPCLI, uh, but the fun thing is, this was code, or this was an error which wasn't in, uh, in the error logs prior to running this specific command, nor was it in the WP debug. So I don't know if anyone can tell me what this would indicate. So it's uh, Array splice expert, uh, expects parameter to want to be arrays when driven and it up. Um, and then it says favicon underscore 316779.ico eval code, eval code, eval code. Basically, this site was hacked, and the entire error, which was a blank page in, the, in a certain screen in the backend, was triggered by an infection of the XMET uh, plugin. And this was found through using WPCLI, just listing the team, because else I wouldn't have found it, or except after a long search probably, but using WPCLI in this case made it much easier for me to, to just trace it back to, uh, to where it came from. Now, there are also um, several, I call them typical errors and, and easy fixes or quick fixes or Things like that. How many of you have seen the library, the media library in this state? Presumably after a migration, I would say. Some some people, I, I suppose. Okay. So usually this is the culprit. So in the WP options table, there's a, a specific field called um, upload path, and now. 
when you're moving a site from one server to another, that pod can be different between the two servers. Now the problem is, if the path is different, and you don't change it, either your website will load endlessly, or try to load endlessly, or your media library will not show, not at all. So if this is the case, <coughs> just empty the field, clean it, and usually it'll work. Anyone has seen this uh, before? Just uh, CSS less surrender. Um, it's also one thing uh, I often see when, when clients are migrating from one server to another, especially when it's from a non combel server to a combel server. Um, directory structures are different, but this is not something which has, which has to do with, with that. In this case, I just broke it deliberately just to show you, but in this case, usually the site URL has something to see. Uh, like I often see this when, when customers change their, their domain name and they make it a typographical error. You can look pretty long and hard for it, but usually just checking out the site URL and home URL are a pretty good place to start. It won't fix everything, but to my experience, in 90% of cases, this was the cause. And then this is also one, which, uh, which you'll find often in the server box. Um, specifically, yes. cannot modify header information, headers already sent. Now, um, I don't know, just by show of hands, how many of you are active PHP developers? So, a couple of you, okay, we'll do the better part even, which is great. So, most of you in this case will know that a PHP script is bound to just give header output once. Now, in WordPress, um, I don't want, want to point fingers, but some teams or some plugins don't always uphold the best coding standards, um, which can cause uh, the situation where uh, header output was already sent, and there's more header output being sent, and sometimes triple or more, and well, PHP can't handle that very well. So there's an easy fix for this, which is in our uh, PHP settings. And this just enable output buffering. It's just a simple change in the php.ne or in your control panel for, for whatever uh, reason. Um, and that'll, that'll fix it for you. So this is actually one of the, the errors I get most often these days. Uh, Mostly when customers are using one, one kind of page builder, which I won't name, which ends with composer. <laughs> so, I'm not a fan, sorry. <laughs> so um, this is one, yeah, sure. Why, why isn't that set by default there? <clears throat> well, that would, that would depend. Um, actually, it would be logical to set it by default. I can't actually figure out a use case at this point why you wouldn't want to set it. But yeah, right. it should be. <laughs> um, any questions concerning it? Because it's, yeah, this is pretty much it. <laughs> Whoa, that's it? Whoa! <laughs> Anybody have any questions for Brett? Hi, hi. Could uh, Thais go next time? <laughs> I could ask him, sure. Okay, thanks. Okay. <laughs> what kind of question was that? For a question like that, you have to make up a serious question as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Could you elaborate on the output buffer a little more? Uh, Thank you. Yeah, uh, sure. Um, depends on what you are looking for. Are you looking out for a more technical uh, response on how the function works, or are you more into the causes or uh, the causes? Okay. Um, well, the basic the basic uh, explica explication is that well, um, if there are several sources of, of output, um, whether it be the team. Uh, several plugins, they all are sending some amount of header information and 
well, when the request is being processed, usually it expects only one set of headers. And when there's multiple, this, yeah, it, it, it goes wrong if you don't have out, uh, output buffering uh, ex, um, active. And, well, what output buffering would do is just, it'll hold open um, the processing of the script or the requests until all header output was received. It'll keep, be keeping it in some kind of buffer, which is obvious since if you see the name output buffering. It'll then all um, solidify them in one major header and then go to, over to the rendering process and, and run uh, or return the results. So, yeah, right. Yeah. Hope that covers it a bit. It, it sounds like misbehaving plugins. In most cases it is. That's why I actually said it's, um, it's why not every single plugin or team developer upholds the best coding practices. Because that's usually the case. It's often a space uh, before or uh, at the end of the PUP opening tag or at the end of the yeah, PUP closing too. tag. Yeah, true. Simple uh, typing error. Yeah. That's what I would. Any more questions? Um, maybe uh, silly, but are there any plugins that could uh, prevent bugs? Um, what would you recommend? I do. I use updrafts and word fans, but is there any more which I could use to? There, there are plugins, but not necessarily for uh, for WordPress. Uh, in that case, I would. Uh, this is actually more uh, a bit of the responsibility of the of the developer of the plugin or team or even core uh, developers. Um, there's a plugin called uh, PHP Code Sniffer, for example, which um, you can use in, in your, either via command line or, for example, it can integrate perfectly in PHP Storm, um, which will just scan your code and, and see if it upholds to the best coding practices. Uh, they also have specific uh, a specific set of libraries to check uh, WordPress-related um, tags and hooks and things like that. Um, but you can also verify your code against PSR 1 or 2, things like that. Um, and those will help, help tremendously to avoid blatant errors, for example, a space uh, well, before or after the tag. So, yeah. That, that might help, but it's not something we can usually prevent on the WordPress <coughs> side. However, there, are some, um, there is some logic built into to WordPress. If, let's say, you're trying to activate a plugin which you wrote yourself, it has a code, it'll just deactivate the activation process and just tell you, okay, there's a fatal error here, um, we couldn't activate. So you'll at least have an indication, but when it goes wrong on an update, it's not, well, it's not always covered by WordPress. So, And since WordPress at that point will break, there's no plugin in WordPress that'll help you out because those won't get executed anymore as well. Yeah. Anyone? Well, to summarize, um, I paid very good attention, I hope. Um, 400 errors is the one that I messed up. Mm -hmm. 500 errors is the one you messed up, a surfer. Um, if something breaks, logs, WP debug, WP CLI, mm -hmm. exactly. and then if nothing else works, blame the hosting company. <laughs> I would say at least call your hosting company and get them to help you. Thank you very much. <laughs>